Well, it means there's not a huge amount of certainty, Jeff, essentially. It could be days, weeks or months when I put that to a minister last night. In terms of the timeline, there was no clear response. What Pedro Sanchez is likely to do is essentially rework the configuration we saw until a couple of months ago when he called the snap election, which is to work with an anti-austerity left-wing party known as Podemos, and then some of the smaller regional parties that would get him over that magic number 176, which is the absolute majority, to get a working government in the Congreso de Deputados behind me. In terms of the alternatives to that, he could also try and work with Ciudadanos, the Citizens' Party. The challenge for that, though, is going to be that the leader of that party, Albert Rivera, has been incredibly critical of Mr. Sanchez during the selection campaign, specifically as it pertains to his actions with Catalonia. He's been accused by Mr. Rivera of treason, essentially, for meeting with Catalan separatists, for engaging in dialogue, and indeed for working with them inside the Congreso up until that snap election. It was their loss of support, you may remember, that caused him to have to call this election because he couldn't get his budget through. Mr. Sanchez last night said that he was willing to work with anyone, though. The only condition we are going to put is respecting the Constitution and promoting social justice towards coexistence and political transparency. So what does this mean for investors? What does this mean for business? Well, there's not a lot of clarity just yet. It could be many weeks until the European parliamentary elections at the end of May, and then even into June, someone told us last night from inside the Socialist Party, before we see a new government. I had a chance to speak last night with the Trade Minister Reyes Maroto, someone we spoke to at the beginning of this electoral campaign, and I asked her whether there was any more certainty at this stage. Here's her answer. Without a doubt, what investors need is stability and a stable government that offers them security. With the results that we've achieved of the 123 seats in Congress, we are able to offer some stability. We can't keep going back to the polls every two years. This also impacts our political and economic credibility in doing so. As I mentioned, this is a breath of fresh air that we are able to offer economic policies where no one is left behind, but also of course generating investment opportunities, which as the Minister responsible for Trade and Tourism, I have been working on. We will need time to analyse the results and work out what the best government will be for this country. I think we definitely have capacity, with the 123 seats, to bring the best efforts needed. Hopefully this will be done in a short space of time, as Spain does need stability, and the sooner we have a government formed, the better it will be for Spain, and the sooner we can keep moving forward with the policies we have started working on over the last 10 months. These policies needed time to come into effect, and now we have time. We have four years to prove that the Socialist Party has a project working towards the future, and I believe that the formation of the government shouldn't be delayed too long. So it remains to be seen whether that is an optimistic prediction that the Socialists will have four years, but some of the challenges ahead of them include the continued and chronic unemployment in many regions of Spain. We're seeing a slightly stalling economy, and although the Socialists have taken social justice measures, something they've really focused on when they were in power, including a higher minimum wage. They're also planning much more high taxes on top earners here in Spain, as well as certain sectors, including, guys, the banks. Willem, do you want to talk about the right? Because we saw a splintering as Vox, the far-right party, came into the mix at the first time we saw the far-right uh, take a seat in Parliament since the country's return to democracy. It was at one, one in ten votes that Vox managed to secure. What type of force do you think they will be in Parliament? Well, what they've done over the last couple of months, Karen, essentially on the national stage, is they've forced the two other parties to the right of centre even further to the right. They've had incredibly conservative views on some social issues, including women's reproductive rights, and they've forced some of the other party members, leaders, high-profile figures, to take slightly more hard-line approaches to some of those issues. But it's been Catalonia that's really seen them grow so significantly from zero to around 10% of the vote, as you mentioned there, is because they've taken the most tough stance when it comes to the idea of allowing any autonomy, essentially, in the Catalan region, something that Pedro Sanchez has said he's completely open to so long as they stay inside the Spanish constitution when it comes to their dialogue with the Madrid centre. Vox really saying they would like to suspend that kind of autonomy and crush, essentially, any of these rebels, as they call them, inside uh, Barcelona and some of the other cities in Catalonia. We've seen some of those high-profile leaders, you remember from that October 2017 period when they held that referendum that the Constitutional Court deemed illegal. We've seen some of them facing prosecution for things like sedition over the last few months. That's been a very polarizing issue here. And yet, 
some of those high profile Catalan politicians, they actually won seats last night from their jail cells. Just to give you a sense of how strong the support is amongst many Catalans for the, some of those pro separatist movements. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.